Today is your lucky day because today we're going to be talking about not one, but two implants in this continuing series. So right, we're going to be talking about the missile uh, implants that were first released when implants were released as a whole, so the support projection and the warhead charge. Now both of these are going to be very, very similar, which is why I'm covering them together, but there are some subtle nuances. So let's go ahead, undock, and dive into it. As I said, both of these are very similar in the way that they are functionally set up. With both of them, you have the option to switch the warhead of the actual missile charge so that it is either extending the range or reducing the explosion radius. Basically, the idea is that you can hit stuff further away or you can hit smaller stuff with better uh, damage application. Now, if you're a little confused by this, basically think about an explosion, uh, kind of like when you see the Death Star explode in Star Wars, how quickly that blossomed out. That is the explosion velocity. How far out total it's going to go is the explosion radius. And the way that damage is applied here is basically how quickly the Millennium Falcon can get out from the middle of the Death Star all the way to the very far reaches so that it is safe when it actually uh, completes the explosion. Because the Millennium Falcon was able to get away fast enough and was small enough, it did not blow up with the Death Star. It's the best analogy I can give you. Now, back to Eve and the actual implants themselves. The way that you're going to be getting these, uh, you can get the Warhead Charge by doing the Tidal Lock. Uh, that is the first completion reward for that one as of this recording. And then you can get the support projection uh, through an op box, or uh, you can also get it through Abyss uh, naturally, but again, it's super rare, so I wouldn't count on being able to get that one, or at least not be able to get that one in that way. I had to pay for it. I'm, I'm expecting to probably have, the most people will have to pay for it as well. Now, what I've done is gone through the uh, entire kind of gambit, similar to what I did with the Focus Crystal. So starting at level zero, basically with nothing activated, nothing going on with these, seeing what the base stats of these weapons are. I did do all this testing with large uh, missiles, torpedoes, and rapids, because I think that's really where you get most of the benefit. So you're going to be seeing those and then going all the way out to level 45. Now with the explosion radius, or the precision missile, you're obviously going to see the largest drop as you go from the torpedoes because they are going to have the largest radius to begin with. The regular missiles, again, so the long range missiles, also have a fairly large explosion radius, so they are seeing a pretty significant drop there as well as you go from level one to level 10. And then uh, the rapid missiles, again, fairly small. Now, what's interesting to note here is that you really are getting most of the benefit by just getting to level 10. That's because when you start originally, they already kind of give you a 20% reduction on these to start with. Uh, so just by having an active of level one, that's really where most of the, the benefit is coming in here. But going up to level 15 does give you some bonus. You end up with about a third of the reduction, so about 33% or something like that, of the total radius explosion penalty or... Uh, here but really the give you some benefit here you are seeing uh raven stop ignore the dog barking in the background with the uh, missile range uh benefit it's again very similar it's not quite as pronounced um you know you do still end up with a little bit more as you get up into level 15 um but it's it's not as i think it's about 20 percent as opposed to 30 percent again that one's starting a little bit lower with the flight time bonus Flight time obviously does extend range, but it's not as powerful as like an explosion or as a missile velocity or flight time velocity, flight velocity. Now, the big problem with both of these is that for the explosion radius, it really doesn't make that much of a difference if you're fighting against a frigate. I would look at this as the way that large missiles are able to better apply damage to really a cruiser and above. I don't think that the frigates are really going to be impacted. When I did my testing, the uh, damage I think was like nine damage per hit with the uh, just base with the uh, rapid missiles. Maybe it was a little bit higher than that. And then it was going up to like 19 or 20 or something like that. So yeah, we doubled our damage, but when you're doubling nine, you're not gonna be killing a frigate anytime soon. Now, with this being said, the place where these really start to shine is when they get their secondary abilities. For the warhead charge, you are able to change the type of damage that you're doing, so you can basically consolidate all of the damage into one specific category, i.e. EM, thermal, kinetic, 
or explosive. At level 15, you're able to do EM or explosive. And where this is really impactful is when you're talking about something like a bomber that can get a bonus to a specific type of damage on those missiles. I liked the hounds, so I went ahead and fitted a hound three up here on the test server. You can see my damage goes from, I think, just over a thousand with one uh, ballistic control to about 1600. That's a really good change. Now you have to balance that against the fact that you're going to have to play with this a little bit as you are fighting. So I would use just the regular modes as you're going through the shield and then you would flip this into armor uh, or you would flip this in when you hit the armor so that you're doing that explosive damage, taking advantage of those weakened resistances. On the flip side, we are seeing the support projection, which has the inertial modifier or the uh, basically a, a web. Now, I like the web here. I think that it's much more universally applicable. Um, if you're hitting a frigate, even if you are only doing that nine damage, suddenly you are then still applying that 20% reduction in speed. That may allow you to slingshot them. That may allow you to uh, have somebody else catch up to them. If you're lose, using long range missiles, it may just help you kite a little bit better. So I think that's really gonna be a much better overall option for this particular implant. Now, as we keep going, uh, we do get up to level 30. I probably would not take either of these implants to level 30 if I was not looking for a Doctrine ship. Uh, and if you are in Silent, you know what I'm talking about here. But the key thing is that at this point, we are getting with the support projection, we are getting the option to use ECM or to uh, basically make each missile hit a cap uh, draining hit uh, or have the option to be a cap draining hit. Now, the key thing with this is that with the ECM, you only have a 5% chance and it's only going to allow you to, you know, turn off one of the mods. So again, if we're talking about a frigate that's got you tackled and they have two points on you, it's only going to let you turn one of those off. So if you're not warp stabbed, uh, you're still kind of hosed. To me, it just doesn't have quite as much applicability as being able to uh, drain cap. Now you are going to be draining cap equal to basically a, a percentage of the total damage that you are doing. So you do have to be very aware of what you're doing and who you're actually applying damage to because it doesn't help you to have this as a separate option or a separate ability that then you cannot actually do anything with because you're only applying nine damage, right? Taking what two uh, gigajoules off of a frigate is not going to help you very much. You do have the option at level 45 to be able to uh, use both the one of the damage applications of so the base of uh, range or dis or uh, explosion radius reduction, but you then also are able to use one of these two. Otherwise, you have to choose. You flip basically through just by tapping the the icon again, and then it'll cycle through to the one that you want. When you do that. Uh, you are able to select which one of the two second abilities so you can flip between those two as well if you get into a spot where you think that one will be more beneficial than the other. For me personally, I don't think again that I would ever go to level 45 with this. The benefits just aren't there um, and it just would take a little bit too much. I think level 30 would be absolutely where I stop. I would not go any further than that because of uh, really just the fall off of any benefit. There's there's no incremental benefit, whatever the, the, the term is for that. So how would I actually use this and what missiles would I use when? Well, for most of the time, again, if I have a level 30 implant, I would probably still be just using the web uh, speed decrease missiles. I think for my style of play, I like cruisers, I like uh, fast ships, I like kitey ships. I think that would be a much better option for me. Um, and so I will likely use that more. However, if I'm going to be talking about using a uh, battleship and if I love my Armageddon and some of the fun shenanigans that I can play with there, I would be putting torpedoes on this thing, getting as much damage as I can, and I would be hitting that thing so that every time I'm doing that, I've got the ability to drain even more cap on top of the 17 newts that I've got on that ship anyways. Again, could be a lot of fun. I think it would be a, a ton of like, WTF type of moments with the the enemy because their cap is just gone But either way, I think that would just be a ton of fun. Now one important note here is that with the uh, Support projection um, when I did the testing if you stack your guns It will calculate all of those guns as one gun for the purposes of the calculations for probability of, of applying these effects so if you have seven uh, seven missiles that are shooting at once, it's gonna just make one roll basically and it's an all or nothing thing. So either you apply the 20% uh, speed reduction or you don't. 
If, however, you unstack your guns and you cycle them, you are actually going to be doing that calculation every single time, and you will get a better application of those, uh, of those abilities, I guess. This is going to be really important, again, if you are uh, using something like the Armageddon, like I just mentioned, and you're trying to drain that cap, you want that to be hitting as many times as possible. Same with the speed. If you're using ECM, that would also be one there, but it does make a big difference. So make sure that you're unstacking your missiles when you're actually shooting at somebody. And we didn't really talk about it on the focus crystal because that's such a passive ability, but there is the durability aspect that you need to be considering. I'm gonna give a big shout out to Big Skillet for kind of reminding me and helping me remember that this is a thing that you need to be considering. Again, just because focus crystal is all passive, I rarely ever use the actual ability. Um, I didn't really pay attention to it, but here as you are cycling through, it will actually decrease over time. Now, the thing to note here is that I went through all of my testing and am still only at 96% or 96 durability, whatever it is. So it goes down very slowly, but it is something again that I would be very aware of. Now this is contrasted in some of the other ones that we'll talk about later. It is a little bit different, but um, it is something just to be aware of that you are eventually going to have to repair that uh, if you use it a ton. So kind of pick one and I'd stick with it as much as you can. And finally, let's talk about the general units. Now, because I probably wouldn't be taking these past level 15 if it wasn't something that I needed to do, there's really only two general units that you can use here. There are only two slots for general units. The first one that I would use is the Ballistic Control Efficiency Optimization. This basically makes it so that when you are uh, using a ballistic control on your ship passively, so you're not activating the mod, it gives you a damage, bo damage boost. Um, again, just because of the way the missiles are and all that stuff, I think that's going to be a really nice little bonus to have. And if you do eventually get to the point where you're applying damage with that capacitor, having extra damage there will help you drink more capacitor. So again, for me, it's kind of a win-win. This one is a little pricey. It's around 1.5 bill right now. Um, Again, that's for a level seven, but I think it's pretty worth it. Now for the uh, the second one, uh, I would also look at the overheating boost. This increases the activation time. I think this one actually might be better if you're only going to level 15, because it's gonna give you more activations and more time between the, or I guess less time between activations where you're potentially applying those impacts and that speed reduction. So the next one that I would do is a callback to the focus crystal. I would actually look at the target painters, although this time rather than the uh, range, I would use the bonus uh, upgrade. So basically giving yourself just a little bit more uh, surface area, if you will, to apply that damage as the missiles are exploding. Because of the way that missiles are, if you're using a long range missile, you're probably hitting at several hundred kilometers away anyways. That one I don't think is gonna be as useful from a range perspective. Everything else is gonna be close enough that you're probably going to wanna just go ahead and have that bonus to uh, the actual blooming effect, if you will. And I think that's gonna be a really good one. Again, it's a little bit less expensive also, so it's a nice value add for a lot of people. Finally, the last one that I would do is the guidance computer. Uh, this is gonna be a little bit uh, dependent on which style of play you want. If you are looking to increase your, uh, you know, your your range, you're trying to do maybe some rallies or something like that with like a Raven Striker, you're trying to hit out beyond the 250 aggression mark. Uh, I would go with the flight time, obviously. You're hitting a capital, so it's not as beneficial to have the, the precision side of it. If you're looking to be more PVP oriented, I'd probably go ahead and use the uh, the precision one because that will again give you better damage application regardless. For both of these, the uh, increments that they go up by is actually relatively small. So unless you're really trying to min max, I don't think that you need to necessarily go with a high priced uh, a high priced GU. I think you can get a lot of benefit out of even a three or a level four. Um, if you're trying to stay within a budget and then be able to eventually upgrade those as you go. So don't feel like you're missing out. I think if you're going to spend money, I would spend it on the BCUs, um, really be able to take most advantage of that. So guys, that's it for today. That is the overview of the missile implants. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Uh, I would be very interested to hear what you guys think. I know missiles are in kind of a weird spot right now, so I think this helps. I don't think it's the ultimate answer, but I'm still going to be flying my bellicose and have a ton of fun with it. So either way, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day, week, month, whatever we are when this actually releases. And until next time, remember, kill marks last forever and fly safe. Have a good one, y'all.